When I first learned to code, I wanted to share everything that I was learning, even pretty elementary stuff like using two for loops. I just felt compelled to try and teach that to someone following in my footsteps, being self-taught and all. And I got a lot of criticism for it. This guy isn't a real developer. He's brand new. He's not doing it right. He doesn't have real world experience and all of that stuff. And my response was always, well, the great developers out there, they're not creating any content. They aren't teaching. Somebody's got to do it. I'm just filling the gaps here. And around that time, there were many people like me, new developers on YouTube, new developers writing blogs, teaching all of the things that they were learning. But where were all the great developers? I mean, if you have so much experience, so much real world experience that can benefit so many people, why would you not be teaching it? Why do you not have your own channel? Why are you not creating your own courses and helping out the masses by broadcasting all that wisdom that's in your head? I mean, we were desperately seeking that kind of content. And as the years have gone by, I've found the answers. They happen to be one, many started programming before the rise of social media and YouTube, and they just have no interest in it. Two, they have a smart mind, but they freeze up on camera or they can't communicate well. But I think there's a bigger reason, one that I want to talk about in this video. And before we get to that, I have to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant.org is a great way to learn math, logic, and computer science interactively. Brilliant is fun, practical, and has thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics from computer science and programming, algorithms, Python, AI, logic, and other tools to help you level up your skills or keep those skills sharp. And it's built for busy people like me and you. Like I said, you can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day. Maybe you want to dive deeper into large language models, neural networks, big data, or just learning the basics of Python, building programs on data one with a built-in drag and drop editor. Today I continued on with algorithms and data structures and spent 10 minutes learning about big O notation and how it describes the complexity of code using algebraic terms. And like I said, Brilliant can help you solidify those AI encoding skills and concepts that apply across different fields. And you can get started today for free for 30 days by using the link below and the first 200 to sign up using the link will get 20% off an annual subscription. That link is brilliant.org slash slash Travis Media. Now back to the video. And as the years have gone by, I've found the answers. They happen to be one, many started programming before the rise of social media and YouTube and they just have no interest in it. Two, they have a smart mind, but they freeze up on camera or they can't communicate well. But I think a bigger reason is that they just have other interests interests that we have completely forgotten how to enjoy. And here's the thing, many of us have made software development our identity. It's who we are. It's what we work on. It's what we breathe. It's what we do in our free time. We work a dev job. We tweet about coding. We create content about code. We meet up with our coding buddies. We go to coding events. We live it every second of every day. And we're scared to take a couple weeks off because we might lose the skill. But the experienced developers have found that there just so happens to be more life out there. They put in their effort at work, but they're really looking forward to biking on the weekend or smoking meats or taking trips or playing music. In other words, they have a life outside of coding. They've learned to make a break in what they do and who they are. The first corporate dev job that I took, there was a senior developer there and he was really, really, really skilled. A great developer, could do anything, could explain anything, but I could never get him fired up to talk about development. He was always talking about his baseball team and the games that he was going to and the hobbies that he was into and the trips that he had planned. And I'm all like, what do you think about ES6 and all that stuff? And he would be like, I don't know, I've never even heard of it. And since then, I've contrasted myself, a person who could code all day and talk about it all night, to the senior devs and tech leads and managers that I've worked with that could cut off coding completely when needed to pursue other interests in their evenings and weekends and days off. They would be at kids' baseball games or they'd be excited about a new entertainment system install or powerlifting or reading history books. In fact, there was a point in time where people had nothing else to talk to me about. They would see me and they would start this small talk on how's your coding going? Or people that code could only talk to me about the latest coding technology. There was no other life outside of that. I either had much to say about coding or little to say about anything else. And these days, I try not to talk to people outside of work about coding. But what's the point in me saying all of this? Am I gonna stop doing this? Of course not, I love this stuff. But again, there's a lesson to be learned here. There's a reason these developers can do this job for 30 to 40 years while you're getting burned out at five. By way of analogy, when you work out and you follow some particular routine, there's usually every six weeks or so a week that you take off. It's called deloading. And that gives your body a chance to rest to recover from weeks of heavy lifting. But you know what? When you come back that week after to resume that routine, you find pull-ups easier and your body more performant because you've given it 
proper rest. Likewise, if we take two weeks off of programming, we don't forget it. In fact, we come back with a much clearer head and a greater passion for it. And we know that's true because taking a 20 minute walk around lunchtime usually helps you solve the conundrum that you were stuck on that morning. So I have three suggestions for you today. Number one, what is something that you loved to do previously, but have since stopped doing? Maybe you used to take your Trek mountain bike and hit the single track every weekend or on random evenings. Then you had kids and you sold it. Sounds like my story. But now you actually have time for it if you stop coding for a bit and get back into it. Think about those things that you used to do, things that excited you, and rekindle that again. Number two, if you find that your mind is always on coding, then you either need to start reading books or you need to start reading wider. C.S. Lewis once said, to make a contrast with someone who is not a reader, we realize it best when we talk to an unliterary friend. He may be full of goodness and good sense, but he inhabits a tiny world. In it, we should be suffocated. The man who is content to be only himself and therefore less a self is in prison. Do you inhabit a tiny little world of coding only? We actually just started this new book in the Imposter Devs community called The Joy of X, A Guided Tour of Math from One to Infinity to try and rekindle that love for math. And not necessarily for programming, but just in general, as many of us haven't considered these concepts since high school. And number three, to become an even better programmer, you need time off. You need time away from it on a regular basis. If you work for a company, then you should be maxing out your PTO. And if you have unlimited PTO, then just quit going to work. Just kidding. That time off will, as strange as it sounds, make you a much better programmer and a more fun person to talk to overall. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.